Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Andrei Jovine, and today I'm presenting our work titled Cycle NER, an unsupervised training approach for the identity recognition. In the first part of this presentation, I will present the problem statement. Then I will introduce the basic concepts of cycle consistency training, as well as the details of our approach. Then I will describe the experimental protocol. And finally, I will report the results of the experiment as well as outline the conclusions. Named entity recognition is a fundamental task for natural language processing, and it's used in many applications such as web search and conversational agents. Most NER models currently rely on supervised learning, which means that they are trained on a large annotated corpus. Acquiring annotations is a slow and expensive process, especially when dealing with low resource languages and emerging domains, such as, for example, the medical one. So we plan to overcome this challenge by training a model in an unsupervised way, using two separate sets of training sentences and entities. The reason for doing this is that acquiring sentences and entities separately is usually less expensive than doing this via annotation. So for this purpose, we have developed Cycle NER, which is an unsupervised framework for uh, NER that is based on the idea of cycle consistency training. Cycle consistency training is a strategy for jointly learning two mapping functions, uh, uh, which are each of which is uh, the inverse function of the other, using two non-parallel sets of training data. In our case, the first function is what we call the sentence to entities, which acts as our NR function. Then we introduce a new function, uh, which is the inverse of NR, which we call entities to sentence. So in this case, given a set of entities as input, the E2S function will output a natural language sentence that contains those entities. Training is divided into two cycles that we call S cycle and D cycle. Each cycle is training one of the two uh, functions while using the other functions output as the training data. The two cycles are repeated over time in an iterative fashion until the two functions become aligned. So here is an overview of the training process of cycle linear, starting from the S cycle. In this case, the input is a natural language sentence. So in this case, we have, uh, I'm not retiring Durant or Reuters. In the first step of the S cycle, the sentence is sent to the current iteration of the sentence to entity model, which will output a noisy set of entities, which in this case are Durant and Reuters. Then the entities are sent to the E2S model, which will generate a back translated sentence, which uh, as you can see in the example is uh, Durant told Reuters, we have no plans to sell the shares. So we can now update the parameters of the E2S model by computing the cross entropy loss between the original sentence and the back translated one. The approach is similar for the E cycle. In this case, the input is a set of entities, which in this case are world cities, Australia, and Sri Lanka. In the first step, we send those entities to the current iteration of the E2S model, which will output a noisy sentence, which in this case is Australia beat Sri Lanka 2 to 1 in the World Series cricket match on Wednesday. Now we send this noisy sentence to the S2E model, which will output a back translated set of entities. So as you can see in the example, World Series and Australia. Again, we update the parameters of the sentence to entity model by computing the cross entropy loss between the original entities and the back translated entities. In order to train an NER model using cycle-NER, we need the following data. First, a set of sentences where each sentence can contain zero or more entities. Then we need a set of entity sequences uh, where we define an entity sequence as a list containing one or more entities. You can see in the example here, for example, uh, Australia, Sri Lanka, and World Series. Uh, entity sequences are a fundamental component of cycle-linear because they are helpful in teaching the sentence 20 d model to recognize multiple entities from a sentence. So uh, the S cycle and this cycle in cycle linear are repeated one after another for each batch of training data. Uh, 
And the way we are able to uh, train the two models without needing annotations is thanks to the learning function that we use, which is based on the idea of reconstructing data from a noisy input. And uh, the good thing is that this uh, is happening even at the beginning of the training. In fact, we can see that from the first iterations of Cycle-Linear, the e cycle is training the sentence 20 model to output entities from a noisy sentence, while the S cycle is conditioning the e 2 model to generate complete sentences based from uh, a noisy sequence of entities. And as training continues, the S2E and E2S function will learn to generate better synthetic output, which in turn improves the, uh, the training of the opposing uh, function. And this process is repeated until we reach convergence. So we designed an experimental setting to answer the following research questions. The first one is, can the NER task be cast as a sequence generation task using our proposed sequence format? The second one is, does unsupervised training work and what is the relation between the reconstruction loss and NERF1? The third question is, how does the number of sentences and entity sequences impact cycle NER? And finally, how does cycle linear fare in contrast to supervised linear models? We performed the experiment on four benchmark datasets, which are Connell 03, which deals with world news and sports, WNAT 17, that contains noisy sentences from social media, Autonauts 5, which deals with telephone conversations, news wires, and broadcast news, and finally, BioCreated 2, PC2GM, which is a dataset specialized for gene sequence recognition. This is an especially challenging task to the, due to the presence of many domain specific terms. We also explore two different strategies for acquiring the entity sequences that I mentioned earlier. The first one is to directly extract ground truth sequences from an NER dataset, which allows us to test cycle NER in optimal conditions. We also explore with a simple strategy to, generally, to generate synthetic entity sequences, assuming that we have access to a dictionary of entities. In this case, the entities are grouped together into sequences based on their semantic similarity. So, in order to apply uh, cycle consistency training, we had decided to cast NER as a sequence to sequence generation task, differently from the traditional formulation, which is based on token classification. So, the first part of the experiment is dedicated to verifying whether this task is, uh, is effective. So, to do this, we tested two uh, neural architecture models, the first being a uh, BLSTM encoder decoder model while the second is the Phi, which is a large pre-training model based on the transformer architecture. We train both models on the Cornell 3 and WNAT17 datasets to perform our sequence-to-sequence -sequence NER task in a supervised way. The results of the experiment show that T5 is performing very well uh, on the sequence-to-sequence -sequence NER task, reaching performance that is close to the current state of the art achieved by token classification models. And the, on the other end, we see that the BLSTM model performs poorly. So from this, we can answer the first research question positively. And so also, also we decide to use D5 as the basis for the S2E and E2S models or uh, psycholinear. In the second part of the experiment, we defined a stopping criterion for cycle NR, which allows us to decide when to stop training without resorting to an annotated development set. And in particular, we measure the relationship between the NR performance calculated as the F1 on a paired development set, the E cycle reconstruction loss calculated on a set of entity sequences, and the S cycle reconstruction loss calculated on a set of sentences. We again do the test on the Connell 03 and WNAT 17 datasets, and we also explore using both ground truth and synthetic sequences. So from the experiment, we discover that there is a strong negative correlation between the E-cycle reconstruction loss and the NERF1 on a development set, which means that as the loss decreases, the NER performance increases and vice versa. For this reason, we decide to use the E-cycle development set loss as the stopping criterion for the following parts of the experiment. <laughs> 
In the third part of the experiment, we perform an ablation study to measure the impact of the training data sites on soil NER. We explore by both using the number of training sentences and increasing the number of training entity sequences. Again, we test on the CONEL03 and W17 and using both types of entity sequences. When increasing the number of entity sequences as training data, we see an unappreciable increase in performance for the CONEL03 dataset. However, there is no definite improvement instead for the WNAT17, which is probably due to the fact that this data is more noisy. When increasing the number of training sentences, we also see a sensible improvement in performance for both CONEL03 and WNAT17. However, the improvements are more moderate. In general, we can conclude that CycleNER is able to make effective use of the increased training data to improve the performance. However, the effect of adding sentences is more moderate compared to the effect of adding more entity sequences. So in the main part of the experiment, we compare cycle NER against a set of baselines. The first one is a supervised BERT model that is trained to perform the standard token classification task. Uh, which, uh, so we chose this model because it represents a common solution for uh, NER models. In order to make the results more comparable, we decided to train the BERT model using only a small sample of each dataset. We also compare a cycle linear against a set of unsupervised baselines. The first one is the lexical matcher, which uses string matching to find entities from a predetermined dictionary. The birth matcher model is uh, the birth model that I mentioned earlier, which is trained this time on a weekly supervised data set that is generated by the lexical matcher. Finally, we have uh, Dural HMM, which is a fully unsupervised model based on the hidden Markov model architecture. On the CONEL03 dataset, we see that cycle-linear training with ground root sequences obtains an F1 of 0.825, which is 87.5% of the state-of-the-art performance. When trained with, uh, ground, uh, with synthetic sequences, the F1 drops to 0.686, which is 72.7% of the state-of-the-art. In general, we can also see that cycle-linear obtains a performance that is close to the uh, supervised BERT model in this case. For the WNAT17 dataset, we see that cycle-linear training with synthetic sequences obtains an F1 of 0.349, which is 59.7% of the state-of-the-art performance. On the Antonuts dataset, cycle-linear training with uh, ground root sequences obtains an F1 of 0.653, which is 70.4% of the state-of-the-art, when trained with synthetic sequences, we obtain an F1 of 0.613, which is 66.1% of the state-of-the-art performance. On the BioCreative 2 BC2 GM dataset, we see that cycle NER only obtains 47.6% of the state-of-the-art performance. And this is uh, due to the fact that this dataset is especially challenging since gene sequence recognition contains uh, many domain-specific terms which were not present in the pre-trained knowledge of the T5 model that we used uh, to model our S3 model. In any case, we see that cycle NER was able to uh, outperform the three unsupervised baselines that we defined at the beginning of the experiment in all four datasets. In conclusion, we have presented cycle NER, which is the first application of cycle consistency training for the NER task. And for this reason, we defined a setup to train and evaluate a model using the cycle NER approach. And also we compared it against a set of supervised and unsupervised baselines. The results of the experiment show that cycle NER is an effective approach for training an NER model using only uh, two separate sets of sentences and entity sequences. So this means that cycle NER can be used to quickly develop an initial NER model, which can then be scaled up by providing new sentences and entity examples. Nevertheless, there are still some challenges that need to be faced. In fact, while analyzing the outputs of cycle NER, we discovered that spam detection errors have a large impact on the performance. 
And this is uh, especially true when handling sentences that don't contain any entities within. As visual work, we propose to address these challenges as well as add new learning functions into PsychoLinear, including denoising of encoding, adversarial learning, and hybrid learning. So if you have any other questions about this approach, feel free to ask any questions and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Andrew, for the presentation. Uh, so any questions from the audience? <clears throat> so have you tried this on other uh, types apart from, let's say, the usual person organization? location type. Sorry, you didn't get the, the question. Yeah, sorry. So I believe that the training sets that you show that you sorry, the evaluation data sets that you use are uh, having the standard types of person organization location uh, as the identity types. Uh, have you tried with data sets that include other types of name identity? Um, yeah, each data set actually has a different set of classes. They, they mostly include the, the common types of, like you said, the person organizations. Uh, for example, Autonauts includes uh, 15 or 16 classes, which are others like dates, uh, numbers, and um, uh, others. And then the BioCreative data set is, does not contain those classes, only contains gene sequences. So it's a completely different task. Uh, but yes, most of them deal with the standard classes, but then include others 